Listen to Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. The country, the men involved, must remain anonymous and unknown. The reports of those intimately concerned are safely buried in the most secret governmental files. Someday, perhaps, their story will become part of history. Today, only three living men know the story, the unbelievable story of what really happened during Operation Cabal. There they are, Ken. The latest reports from the city of Paranta. I think you'd better read them. Sure, Chief, yeah. Ah... Looks like a familiar pattern, all right. Rioting in the streets. Impending national emergency. Yeah. Unscheduled military maneuvers. There's a revolution cooking, all right. Has to be. And Paranta's the capital of one of the most democratic countries in the Southern Hemisphere. Emilio Hurado is one of the greatest presidents she's ever had. Ken, if a country like that becomes totalitarian... Yeah. It might be the beginning of a tidal wave that could drown the world. Yeah. What's the Bureau done about it? Oh, we've got one of our best men down there, Bill Verdeer. Oh, what's Bill come up with? Not too much. But General Jose Lopez seems to be the leader of the opposition. Lopez? Oh. oh, chief of their general staff, the man who wanted them to side with Hitler during the last war. That's right. What's uh, President Jurado doing about it? He hasn't been seen in public for over a month. He may be sick, dead, held incommunicado. It's anybody's guess. Oh. Huh. So what are we going to do about it? Nothing we can do, chief. What? Until I get to Peranta. Senor Ken Thurston. That's right. Who are you? My name does not matter. This way, I have transportation available. Suppose I'd rather take a cab. The choice is not up to you, senor. Uh-huh. I noticed your power closing in on us. Well? Let's go. Take it, your General Jose Lopez. You are quite correct. Why all this special attention? It is customary to give special attention to an important personage visiting our country. It becomes essential when that personage is the man called X. Speaking about an unknown quantity, General? To the contrary. There is very little we do not know about you. And as a military man, I am naturally interested in the movements of a potentially dangerous enemy alien. Since when are your country and mine at war? They are not at the moment. What you're trying to say is that if, as and when, a revolution takes place here, I should keep my nose out. It would be much healthier. And if I don't? I believe the usual penalty covering such a situation is execution. Well, we have arrived, senor. The residence of El Presidente, Emilio Jorado. You are free to go in. Yeah. Thanks for the lift, Lopez. I'll see you around. See, si. you undoubtedly will. You are here, Thurston? That's right. I am President Urado's personal physician, Dr. Hans Tiller. Just what did you wish to see him about? Well, that's my business, isn't it? President Jurado is not here. Then where is he? He's on a secret vacation for his health. What's wrong with him? A physician's relationship with his patient is a confidential matter, Herr Thurston. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
Now, you will excuse me. I'm quite busy. The guards will show... Yeah? Good. Danke schön. So, you came here to discuss a possible revolt against the government, Herr Thurston. Did I? That is what a friend of yours in the anteroom has just informed me. That's nice of him. General Lopez? Nein. A Herr Pagan Zellschmidt. But I didn't tell the Dr. Tiller nothing, Mr. X. It was the president's guards who called him. Oh, I swear it by the father of my father, Norris. Then what the devil are you doing there in the first place? Well, where else would I go when the chief told me you wanted my invaluable services here in Paranta? You could have gone to the Rio Hotel where he told you to go and waited for me there. What for? So I could have used you as an undercover man. Now, get in touch with our agent here, Bill Vadir. He's at a flower shop on the Calle Venta. Tell him I want to talk to him tonight, after I see President Jurado. President Jurado? But, but I thought you didn't know where he is. I have a hunch Dr. Tiller was lying, but Jurado was right there in the presidential mansion. But they, they got guards all around the place. Some years ago, he showed me a passageway in the walls leading from his apartment to a gardener's cottage. But, but maybe the guards know about it, too. You, you, you could get all shut up or something. Oh, yeah, could be. Enough. Well, you see, Elena, I was right. Senor Thurston has honored this home with a return visit. Yes, but I didn't expect this kind of a reception committee. That is quite understandable. By the way, the lovely nurse is Elena Vargas, and I am Don Carlos Alvarez. We are both at your service, Senor. If you mean that, why doesn't Senorita Vargas put away the gun? Of course. You understand I could not afford to take chances, Senor Thurston. Not with the El Presidente in his present condition. What is Emilio's condition? He is in the bedroom. Why not assert him for yourself? I will. Oh, good Lord. Strapped to the bed. Wasted away to... What's happened to him? Dr. Tiller's diagnosis is one of a complete breakdown through overwork, both physical and mental. And you don't agree? It does not matter what I believe. I am only his nurse. Yeah. Who are you, Don Carlos? An artist, Senor Thurston. Appointed by Dr. Tiller to furnish El Presidente with some form of vocational therapy. I see. President Jurado has spoken quite often of his good friend, Kane Thurston. And I would deem it an honor to work toward the preservation of my country with a man called X. Hmm. What about you, Senorita Vados? I will do anything to prevent this land from being destroyed by totalitarian ideology. All right, we've got less than 48 hours to do it. 48 hours? The 27th of May, the logical day for the revolution to take place. Of course. This country is Independence Day. There will be traditional military maneuvers, providing a perfect opportunity for General Lopez to seize the citadel, the government's nerve center. And the revolution will be over. Unless we can learn who the leader is. The leader? But you already know him. General Lopez. I doubt it. Lopez is brutal and vicious, yes, but he doesn't have the imagination, the knowledge that was necessary to soften a great democracy until it was ripe for a dictatorship. Again, I agree, Senor Thurston. It must have taken the most careful planning over a period of years, consummate skill in organization, most thorough knowledge of geopolitics and psychological warfare. No, whoever is behind this, man or woman, is quite likely a genius. But if it is not Lopez, who could this leader possibly be? That's quite a question, Elena. And we haven't much time to answer it. (laughs) 
Believe me, Mr. X, your worries are all over. Once a Zellschmidt puts his nose to a grindstone, he really sinks his teeth into it. So you got in touch with Bill Vadir? You bet. And he knows all about who's the leader in the back of this revolution and stuff. Uh, here's the flower shop now. He said if he wasn't here, he should make herself a... Yes! The back room. Uh, uh, <gasps> Mr. Rex, it's, it's Bill Vadir. Bill, can you hear me? Who was it? Bill. Leader. Recording. The leader. Who is it, Bill? Who is the leader? He... Recording. It... It... Oh, Mr. X. Yes. Oh. Bill Verdeer. One of the best men who ever... Hey, what are you doing with that phonograph? There's a recording on it. It may give us a clue to the leader. Bill wanted us to play it. Mr. X, listen to that voice. Yes. But it don't make sense. What would Bill Verdier be doing with a record of that lunatic voice? You're listening to a man who almost destroyed the world, Pega. Oh, sure, but that's all dead buried stuff. He, he bumped himself out in Berlin over seven years ago. Did he? What? The label on that record, in Bill's handwriting, it says the recording was made here in Palanca. Just two days ago. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Friends, as we celebrate Memorial Day this weekend, millions of cars will crowd our streets and highways. In every car will lurk an unwelcome passenger, a grim menace who will turn pleasure into tragedy if he can. The menace is death or injury in a traffic accident. So keep on the alert every instant, not only for yourself, but for the other fellow. Be extra careful, won't you? Drive as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. <laughs> Impending revolution hangs over the capital city of Paranta in South America threatening to start a tidal wave of totalitarianism that might engulf the entire hemisphere. And the only clue to the possible identity of the unknown leader of the revolutionary movement is a recording made in Paranta only two days before. A recording of the voice of Adolf Hitler. You've got some new information, Don Carlos. That is correct, Senor Thurston. The plan is brutal, cold-blooded perfection itself. The military maneuvers will be held upon the open fields outside the city tomorrow. All prominent government officials loyal to President Jurado will view them from the headquarters in the citadel. And I suppose the Air Force is going to put on an exhibition of bombing. But instead of using mock targets on the fields, they'll bomb the citadel. Exactly, Senor. The Air Force holds the balance of power. Who's at the head of it? Of course. Colonel Luis Montalvo. How does he stand? Well, apparently he has been playing along with the revolutionists. But I believe that secretly he is in sympathy with President Jurado. I think we'd better find out. <laughs> Please, Mr. X, how crazy can we get walking right into General Lopez's army camp? We're putting our mouths right into the line. We are not entering the camp. Colonel Montavo has his quarters right here, Ooh. outside the gates. Buenos dias, senor. Elena? Please come in. Sure. You bet, baby. You came to see Colonel Montalvo? Is he in? See, si. in this room. Mr. 
Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Who killed him, Elena? You? No, senor. He was my betrothed. Oh. I'm sorry. He... He asked me to come here this afternoon. He said he had a most important decision to make. I walked in and found him there. What was the decision about, Elena? He did not say. Only that it concerned an important speech to be made in the officer's wardroom at three o'clock. We were going to listen to it here. On the intercommunication system. I see. It's a little after three right now. Do you mind if we turn the speech on? No. No, I do not mind. Mm, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Then you were right, Ken. He is the leader. Looks like it, Chief. Uh, now that Montalvo's dead, we can't even get the Air Force on our side. Looks like I came down here just in time for the funeral. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Chief. Don't forget President Jurado. Watch it, Chief. Jurado's apartment's on the other side of this panel. I'm ready, Ken. Then let's go. Jurado's bedroom. Come on. Huh? What's this loss? Can that needle? Let's have it, Doctor. Let's have it. Ah, you fools! What are you doing here? Get out! Get out! You hear? Get out! Sorry, Doctor. You... Oh, oh. Yeah. How about it? Did we get here in time? I'm afraid not. The hypo is empty. Then killers already used it on Jurado, and we don't know what it is. There's an empty ampule on this table. Uh, what is it, Ken? Morphine. Then they have been keeping him doped. Keeping him on ice until they were sure they didn't need him anymore. Yes, but they finally made up their minds. This last shot was strong enough to kill him. Then there's nothing more we can do to stop that madman from coming back into power. Day, all right. Yep. There's General Lopez command post, down on the edge of the field, next to the section they've marked off for the mock aerial attack. Here come the planes now, ready to drop their eggs in the city. That's right, Chief. H bomber. All aircraft. This is General Lopez. It is now 50 seconds before H hour in Operation Citadel. You know what to do. You have your orders. Our glorious leader expects us to carry them out as planned. We shall, and out of the ruins of this citadel shall spring a strong nation of supermen. Prove to the world that we are truly a superior people. Proof that it is our destiny to rule the world. There are now 15 seconds remaining. The lead plane has already released its bomb. The first will strike in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. You can stop counting, Lopez. You're only wasting your breath. First time. That's right. Watch the door, Pagan. Huh? Is that the direct guard? Guard, they're listening. Can you hear me? I'll ask them. No use, Lopez. Those guards out there on the people's side. And don't move unless you want me to use this gun. You fools. Do you realize that your president is dead? That the Citadel is nothing more than a heap of broken rubble. That is... The bombs. What has happened? They have not fallen. That's right. But I gave orders. I was counting the seconds. I gave the orders. 
The Air Force got their real orders from the commander in chief, President Jurado. It is not possible. The drug Dr. Tiller assured me it would kill him. He forgot to tell you he was carrying an antidote in his medical kit. What? Emilio Jurado is still a sick man, but he's far from dead, Lopez. And he was alive enough this morning to call a secret meeting of his loyal Air Force men to brief them on what you and your glorious leader were trying to do. Perhaps. But you will not live to enjoy your victory. I can't watch it. Thanks, Chief. Boy, well, <laughs> I guess that does it all right, Mr. X, huh? Whole finish except for the shouting. Not quite, Pegor. There's still the leader to take care of. Hey, what about that crazy man? He's in the next room waiting to speak to his troops after their splendid victory. He is? Then you know who he is, sure. eh? Sure. Called himself Don Carlos Alvarez. Don Carlos? But he couldn't be. He didn't even look like him or talk like oh, him. Oh, the physical disguise was good enough, but he didn't change the man. The egomania. The big lion boasting technique that was used in Mein Kampf. It came through in everything he said and did. But, but, but... Ken. Yeah. He's out on the target field. He must have heard. Ken, those bombers. Taking a bomb run on that target field. We've got to get him away. Hold it, Chief. It's too late now. he's buried for good. Is he? You saw for yourself. Those bombs were your answer. Oh, we'll never have to worry about him again. I'd like to believe that, Chief. But bombs and wars have been tried before. And the ghosts of men like that still haunt us. No, there's a different answer. It was given to us 2,000 years ago. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. <laughs> And now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, Will Wright, Bill Conrad, Paul Fries, and Ted Von Els. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we of the man called X are taking our leave of the air for a while, and we hope it won't be for too long. I should like to express thanks to the many other players who have helped to put this program over through these many months. Also to our writer, Sidney Marshall. No relation, by the way, though I'd like to be that way. And then to the two regulars, Leon Belasco, who you know so well as our pagan, and Will Wright, our chief. Then there are our music master, Milton Charles, our announcer, Hal Gibney, our sound effects, wizards, Floyd Caton and Monty Fraser, our engineer, Leon Fry, and Betty Collison, our sweet secretary. Now I come to our producer-director, Jack Johnstone, whose skill and gentle understanding have guided us all through the years of offering you the Man Codex. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production. All characters and incidents on tonight's program were fictitious and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Hell, give me speech. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.